I don't mean to interrupt. I'm bad. What? I'm bad today. I forgot about the whole Legion tie-in of this whole weekend. There's actually a group on um, Facebook. If you go onto Facebook and look for Uncanny X-Men series, it's a fan-made series, and they did the Dark Phoenix saga. They filmed, you know, eight That's episodes X-Men. or whatnot. X-Men. Yes. It is. Oh, I'm not but making in the, the Dark connection. Phoenix saga, they have the Imperial Guard. Oh yes, that's uh, right. And they had some people as Imperial Imperial Guardsmen, and it was kind of cool to have some Legion analogs actually filmed. Now, of course, it's a fan made thing; they get no money from this, so don't expect the Fox <laughs> special <laughs> effects team here. Um, but they've actually gotten really popular online, so they are actually going to do the next one. I don't know what story they're going to do, but they're going to be doing twenty episodes next season, I believe. Oh my! Right. So it, it'll probably be a bigger, um, a bigger set. So please go to Uncanny X Men series on Facebook, watch their stuff. I think the Dazzler episode's kind of funny because um, she's in roller skates. It's pretty. It amusing. would have to be yeah. exactly yes. And um, watch it and and just see what you think, you know, and realize the limitations. But this is actually kind of a cool thing. Plus, Colossus and Wolverine are really hot. So um, there you go. That's my uh, that's my plug for that. These guys were really good, really into what they're doing, and um, it was just nice to see people kind of do something that was unique and artistic. And we should support them because God knows when we'll get another X Men movie. So, well, this is true, or one featuring the Imperial Guard. So, yeah, that seems <laughs> that seems much less likely, doesn't it? Exactly, exactly. So, as long as as long as one can get past the whole thing about. Uh... You know, Gladiator is supposed to be Monel. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. No matter how much they tried to keep moving him toward being Superboy, he, you know, Gladiator's Monel. We yeah, know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Drives me nuts. <laughs> nuts, I say. Oh, and, and well, the boy worse plays, than the regular Monel. Yeah, the guy who plays <laughs> Havoc is kind of hot too. Damn, oh. he was a hot blondie. Ooh, my goodness. Anyway, I need to stop looking at these pictures. What are we talking about tonight? But Adam Hawkehorn is an Atlanta actor. Not a bass actor who uh, has been doing various videos for the past two years. His most recent project, The Uncanny X-Men, is a six-episode web series that focuses on the comical book, the comic book uh, superheroes known as the X-Men. The series follows the story of the Dark Phoenix Saga, one of the comic's most famous storylines. Adam plays the role of Cyclops, the leader of the X-Men, a uh, mutant with the ability to shoot an optic blast from his eyes. Adam joins us tonight to uh, discuss the season one that he finished um, and the upcoming project that he has uh, working on season two. Welcome back to the show, Adam. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks for having me back. Thanks for being back. How are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm doing great. The uh, show is doing great so far. Everything sounded great. and um, Yeah. Well, you know, I have to say I, I saw um, some of the videos and, you know, you probably already know it, but you're a very talented guy. And I can say this because I know you, <laughs> but you are talented. And, uh, and one thing I liked about um, one of the, I can't remember which, which uh, episode it was, but you told me that you bring some of your own kind of impromptu to the character. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a certain line in season one where I'm talking to Havoc, um, who is my brother in the series, um, and I just kind of make a little response after he taps me on the shoulder saying, don't touch me. Um, <laughs> kind of I said so. Um, yeah, we you know we we had fun with the season, and you know you had a little bit of liberty to add things here and there. Okay. Well, I know um, in talking about Uncanny X Men web series that you all completed season one, and uh, how did you first get involved in that particular project? Well, with that project uh, on Facebook, there's a lot of different uh, local acting groups, uh, especially for Atlanta, because everyone likes to support each other. And I just saw them posting on there. Uh, They were looking for someone to play the role of Cyclops. Um, And so I sent in my information, my profile, and talked to the uh, casting director and the director, and um, they liked me. So they gave me a shot. Were you always a huge fan of X-Men? I looked at the comics. Uh, You know, they were my favorite comics growing up. Uh, Wolverine was one of my favorite X-Men characters. So um, I did have some background in the comics. You know, as I grew up, I kind of moved on to other things. But um, always a fan of the series, saw all the movies. So uh, that definitely helped. So what, how do you prepare for a role like that? 
Uh, the best thing to do is, um, you know, really research the role. And the best thing is, um, since the comic's been around since the 60s, you've got a lot of source mm-hmm. material to work with. Uh, you can kind of see how the characters evolved over the series. And with the Dark Phoenix saga, you take it from that time period. And uh, I actually read every comic book from that saga. A friend of mine, Lemmy wow. Barley, read those. Um, just to kind of see how Cyclops did act in that time period, uh, you know, as a relation to other X-Men. Um, so a lot of reading and then just kind of researching online, seeing how, um, you know, people thought on the character, how he's supposed to act and everything like that. Okay. And you all started shooting with the second series uh, or season two um, in the next month or so. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Starting in a couple of weeks, um, we're going to start season two production, everything like that. Uh, we had a meeting last night, just kind of a meeting with the cast and crew, which went really well. Uh, so, yeah, we're getting ready for this thing to go on next few months. We're going to get everything filmed, and we expanded into 22 episodes now, so it's going to be a big wow. project this time. So how long does it generally, generally take to, to complete? I know I, this one's going to be a lot longer, um, more shows. How long do you, do you project it to uh, last, the filming? Uh, well, this time we have a lot of bigger, lot bigger crew uh, to work with. You know, we have six directors this time. Uh, so and a lot more help with camera work and uh, lighting and you know everything like that. So it's projected, you know, a couple episodes might be filming until August. So over the summer, it's going to be a lot of that. Season one took about two, two and a half months to do. Um, and you know, with so many actors, you have to work around their schedule because a lot of people do yeah. have a nine to five. Uh, so mm-hmm. you have a lot of evening shootings and weekend shootings. Wow! Wow! So. Um... What can we expect in season two? Can you give us give away a little bit of it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, a, a lot of people might know it, but uh, after the events of season one, which was the Dark Phoenix saga, the um, the show's kind of going to revisit a lot of everyone's origins. So you're going to see kind of the history of all the main characters: Professor, uh, Professor X, Cyclops, Wolverine. Um, you get a lot of uh, background on who they are mm-hmm. and the reason they fought because of that is because after the Dark Phoenix saga, the team kind of disbanded uh, after the tragic events. So we have the Professor looking to call back because Juggernaut, who is a, a big villain in season two, comes back and the Professor needs help. So he's kind of going to recall the X Men to have this giant fight with the Juggernaut. Um, and then after we do that, we're transitioning into Days of the Future Past, which is another popular series uh, with the X-Men. And in that one, they explore kind of it's a future where a lot of the X-Men are dead. And we have a X-Men that's going to come back and prevent the assassination of a president because this triggered a timeline. His assassination triggered a timeline that created this um, kind of bleak future. So it'll Ooh. go into that arc. And then there's a few other stories in there also that we're mixing in. So it's a lot of stuff. Um, you know, it'll be nice to see all the origins. We're going to have a lot of, you know, young versions of all our favorite X-Men, and we're going to have kind of the futuristic storyline. When when you're filming, um, and you kind of know, obviously, you know, you're, you're basically retelling the story, but do you kind of know what to expect when you see the finished product? Or are you... Surprise! Does anything surprise you when you're looking at the finished product? Of, wow, I, I, I didn't know it would come out that way. Uh, yeah, there's always a few things. You know, you want to make it just like the comic book, and there's certain limitations, especially since we're kind of a um, pretty much a no budget uh, production that you mm-hmm. can't, you know, you can't have too many special effect things. So you work with what you have, and you get you're really surprised how close to the source material it looks after filming. Um, you know, after you see it come out, you're kind of proud that. You know, we nailed this part, you know, scene from, scene yeah. from the comic book. And you all have a big following, like a really big following. Um, what is the what are what is the reaction that you've gotten from season one? Uh, mostly positive. You know, everyone that's commented on the YouTube, they love the series. You know, they like the characters. They like the storyline. Uh, the Dark Phoenix uh, for the comic book people are big fans of the story. So, yeah. That we'd like to see that retold, you know. And there's an X Men comic book uh, in the ni- or X Men cartoon in the '90s that kind of did the story also. So they mm-hmm. just like to see their characters done in the real time. And there were the X Men movies, but they didn't follow any of the Dark Phoenix saga to the T. So 
it's good for the comic book fans to kind of see that. And then it's good for just a casual person to watch, you know, a web series um, for the X-Men. Right, yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it. I was actually surprised how, you know, you, you mentioned that it is real budget, but it, it's so professional. And, um, you know, all the actors, you know, do a great job, in my opinion. With, oh, yeah, um, we had a great team. Good. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Good. I'm sorry. Let me cut you off. Oh, no, no. We had a great team, you know, uh, definitely a great cast and crew. Everyone was working well together. You know, we didn't have any divas. Um, when you get so many people working together, you always have to worry about, you know, egos clashing or just people being difficult. But when we had so many people here, everyone had the spirit of working together, getting this done, you know, no drama, no issues. Um, and it's a really um, great that everything came together so smoothly, uh, even with a little few hiccups that we got it done and everyone, you know, still gets along and we're ready for season two. And also YouTube them, um, Uncanny X-Men series. And you should see all the six episodes. They're about 15 minutes long, so give yourself some time to watch them. But uh, they're definitely worth the watch. Yeah, they are. They definitely are. I was actually about to ask you where can we see the, the see those uh, the uh, videos. And you have your own website, elsherhomie um, dot com. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. That's just kind of an overview of a little a few of the things I've worked on, and people want to reach me. Um, and I also use the Twitter, um, not the Twitter, but you know, Twitter and. I'm not a big fan of it, but if you want to follow me, it's fly as a tight. Uh, so that's my username on Twitter. 